Esther chapter 3. After these things, after these things, after the new queen has been put into office, a Gentile queen, I mean, uh, excuse me, a Jewish queen, the Gentile queen is out. After these things, after the church is gone and the, and the Jewish are set up, after these things, the king as a hers promote Haman. There's your fourth character of this book. As a hers king, he, he's, he's there in the background. So like, well, God will be in the tribulation. He's there, but in the background. There is Esther. She shows up after the Gentile queen. There is Mordecai. I can't place him in the tribulation unless he's the type of 144,000 or Moses Elijah, but there is he. Now here is Haman. Haman, I'm just going to come out and tell you, he is the Antichrist of this Esther. He's going, he is the type of the Antichrist of the tribulation. Everything that he does, there's nothing good about Haman at all. There's no good in the Antichrist. But Christians seek out, you know, there's the 666, six, six, oh, the, you know, no, we don't need to worry about that. We're not even going to be around, even before it starts. Haman, the son of Hamadiah the Agai, and advanced him. Also, if Asahurus is a type of God, Haman is a type of Antichrist, who advanced him? God does. So everything that in the tribulation is allowed of God, read the story of Job. It was allowed of God. When David numbered Israel, one place said God did it, another place said Satan did it. Listen, the tribulation period is for the Jew, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It is God chastising the Jews for what they did to his son, to the Messiah. He's chastising them, so listen. He's tired of them going to Egypt. He's tired of them running to the world. He's tired of them running to Satan for the help. So, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. What do you read about princes in the, in, in the book of Revelation? Well, there are ten kings. It says prince is here, and he's seated above them all. Well, read the book of Revelation about what the Antichrist. He's got ten rulers, and you know that's a whole other story of itself. But look at here, and all the king's servants. That's interesting. All the king's servants. That'd be the Jews. They're God's people. That were in the king's gate bowed. And this word here, reverenced. You got to mark that word here. Now, in the Bible, you find the word reverence 13 times. Reverenced, past tense, once. And you find reverend in your Bible one time. That reverend is found in Psalms 111, verse 9. It's God and not man. So when you get man coming around, I'm the reverend such. No, you've just taken God's place. Don't go preach about the Pope where he takes the Holy Father. You just took the reverend title from God, Psalms 111, verse 9. Imagine that. Someone calling himself Reverend, and that's God's title. That's exactly what the Pope does over there in John, I think it's 17, I think. But it says the Most Holy Father, something like that. And that's the title that the Pope uses. That reverence in verse 2 is the key to why Mordecai will not do what he's do going to do or has to do. Now, he can bow down before, the, for, before somebody, you know, that was an oriental greeting. Like we shake hands. He can do that. But no Jew can reverence another man. 
And when that Jew realizes, hey, I'm supposed to reverence that guy who's sitting in the holy, the most holy place, I got to get out of town. And I better play, pray that my flight ain't in the winter. I better hope I'm not pregnant. I better hope, you know, not go back in my house, get my clothes, and not run back. I better get out of town, get out of Dodge. Because guess what? Haman's going to be wanted to be reverenced. You don't believe me? What did the devil tell Jesus? I believe it's Mark 4 and Matthew 4. He says, if you fall, talking to God's son, he says, if you fall down and worship me. That's what Satan wants. That is the whole thing that Satan's trying to do. He wants people to reverence him and not God. And if you're a born-again Christian and you're doing what you're supposed to, if, if Satan can get your reverence off God, then he'd be happy. So reverence is a big key word in what's going on in chapter 3. He wants to be God. Now let's read what happens more. For the king had so commanded concerning him. He said that would, that would not be God. What's it say over there in Romans? God gave them a lie because that's what they want. God gave them over to false prophets. God gave them over. God gave them this. God sent the lying spirit in the Old Testament. The world wants Satan. So God says, okay, there he is. Take him. Take him. I'll give you one thing, though. Satan, the Antichrist, Lucifer, the devil, the dragon, the, the old serpent, all that, will never show you grace and never show you mercy. Imagine this place, this planet, without mercy and without grace. When you go walking into a hospital and your, your baby in your arms is crying for whatever reason, and they turn you away because you have not received the mark. When you are without food and you are just ready to die, they will not give you food, not even a morsel, unless you receive the mark. That's unmerciful. That's ungracious. At least God, the Bible says, he makes his rain, rain on the just and the unjust. So the Antichrist is set up by God, and the Antichrist is given to the people by God. God allows it because that's what they want. You better be careful what you want because God may give it to you. That's the main lesson. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? A Jew cannot do it. So in the eyes of God, it's pleasing to God that the Jew won't fall down. Now there will be Jews that will fall down to Antichrist. You know that. But there will be Jews that, you know what? <laughs> uh, we can't do this. Then guess what? You live by your neck. Now it came to pass... When they spanked daily unto him. So this is not just one day. Daily. Every day. Why ain't you doing this, Mordecai? Who do you think you are? It's going to happen to tribulation. They're not going to worship the Antichrist. They're not going to worship the Antichrist. They're not going to worship the Antichrist. And they're going to be told by the people. They're going to be told by the people. They're going to be told by the people. Then one day, as we're going to read in this chapter, enough is enough. Remember I said, Esther is a historical book. It's also a prophetical book that's going to happen again. You're reading about the tribulation and you're reading about history. 515 B.C. and who knows when the, when the tribulation is going to take place. We don't know the time. He hearkened not unto him. He wouldn't even listen to him. What did we just read in Isaiah? What did God just say about the Jews? He said, listen, you, you, you're... you're your eyeballs are brass. Your neck is as hard as iron. You're stubborn people. And they are. Listen, 
We're to pray for them. We're to love them. We're, we're, we're to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. But they are stubborn and hard-necked people. This is what Mordecai is. He's your typical typical Jew. I'm not listening to you. You think you are. That they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. Uh-oh. He said, listen, I'm a Jew. I don't have to do that. And the people went and told on him. You got to be careful of who you hang out with, who you think is a friend, who you think is a family member, who you think, maybe even who you think is a Christian, will rat on you one day. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Why would Haman be full of wrath? Because of this one man that won't bow down before him and give him the, you know, kiss his foot or his ring. Because that is the motive, that is the operai, that is the number one thing that Satan wants. And if you're not going to worship Satan, you're not going to worship anybody or anything. In Satan's eyes. How dare you worship that God? How dare you worship that God that does all this troubles and all that he, he uses? By the way, the, the devil has many costumes. He's just not that little red guy with the pitchfork. He shows up in all clothes. He's got all different kinds of costumes out there. Check out Hollywood. So he's full of wrath, not just wrath. Full anger. Picture the devil, Satan on this planet, full of wrath after one race of people. And then, But Jesus said that there will be nations that are going to try to help that Jew. And they'll get into the millennium. Even with the wrath. And we haven't even gotten into the wrath of, of Haman. Wait till we get into it. This is just the beginning. Now, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Well, that's good. Okay. I'll accept that. The troubles with Mordecai, go after him yourself. Okay. I may sound wicked by saying that, but I'm saying, listen, you got a problem with somebody? Go after that person. But that's not going to stop. For they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Asahurus, even the people of Mordecai. What's the Antichrist going to do? What is now going to be his motive? He wants to wipe out the entire nation of Israel totally. He's been doing that since, since God told him, Thou shalt have a son, and from him will I give you all the earth, I'll give you all the seed as, as, a, as the sand of the sea, as the stars. He's been tacking ever since Abraham. He's been tacking ever since Adam and Eve. But mostly Abraham and, well, Abram and uh, Sarai. Out to get that Jewish seed. And then when Jesus Christ came, he tried to get Jesus killed before his time. Listen, you think Hitler was a bad, wicked man. You wait till you get the Antichrist. You don't you, listen, the world, you know, it's funny, the world does not believe in capital punishment today. It will. I know what the book says. I know what the end shows up to be. Decapitation will come. You know, the world today, don't kill this guy. He, and what, but when it comes to someone who's of God, kill him, crucify him. Oh, you mean they're going to kill Jews? Yes, it's going to happen. And anybody that will help the Jew, anybody who will stand up for the Jew, anybody who takes care of the Jew, Study uh, the prison camps and out of Hitler and what he did with the Jews, and that will be a cupcake compared to what the cake 
that the Antichrist will, will do. Remember, the Antichrist is going to have power to call fire down, do all kinds. Of, listen, he's going to make an, an inominate object. He's going to make Walt Disney World out happy because he's going to make this thing who can't talk. He's going to make it talk. No one can do that today. I'm not talking about a recorded, put a recorder or CD in it. I'm talking about he's going to give power and light to an image. Nebuchadnezzar couldn't even do that. He had to play a band. And guess what? Kingdom has a hers. This is the Lord's kingdom, the Lord's people. He's going to be in Israel. He's going to be in Jerusalem. That's the Lord's land. This is going to happen. Even the people of Mordecai, Jews. So it may, uh, you, you can take this or leave it. This is not doctrinal. But according to chapter 3, there's going to be one man that's going to irritate, irritate the Antichrist. It, it may not be so. But in the book of Esther, chapter 3, one man irritates Haman. How many men irritated Satan when God decided to drown out the whole world? One. Noah. How many men would have been upset with the Psalm Gomorrah? One. Lot got out. How many men would Satan been upset with, with the victory over de death and the sin? One. Jesus Christ. He went after one man in the beginning. Adam. King Adam of all heaven and earth. In the first month, that is the month Nisan, Nisan, in the twelfth, there's that twelfth, year of King Azahurus, they cast Pur, what's that? That is Lot. He's going to pull straws, soap, dice, white, black ball, something like that. He's going to keep on doing this, he's going to keep on doing it, but he finds the right day. May pull down a one, you know, put a coin in eleven, pull down to see if he get three cherries. What's it say over there in Proverbs about lots? The whole dispensation of who? God. So he's going to be casting these lots like Haman casts these, and God's going to say, okay, today's the day. Pull that, whatever he's going to do. And boom. No matter what, Satan operates in the realm of God, and Satan doesn't even know it. Satan's like, oh, boy, here's my big day. And God's like, I'm letting you do that, okay? Just think you're going to win. You're not going to win. I'm God. You lose. Isn't it funny how Satan knows the whole book, but he doesn't realize he's going to lose? I mean, he went up to Jesus and said, fall down and worship before me. There's some things that Satan knows, and there's certain some things that whether he don't believe it or he has no wisdom of, he just doesn't understand. He thinks he's going to win. So he's pulling these lots, and Proverbs say that the lot is in dispensation of the Lord. The Lord's going to say, okay, this is the time. We're already seeing God set this man up. God's allowing this to happen, and God's going to have a certain day. A three and a half years. At that three and a half year point of the tribulation, when it becomes the great tribulation, that's when the lot is going to be chosen. That day. One more brother. Before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month. He's been doing this for, for we don't know how many months, to the, to the twelfth month, twelfth month, twelve. That is the month Adar. So he's doing it day by day, he's doing it month by month, and I probably think it's going to probably be right at that three and a half year point. Then you got the Great Tribulation. And Haman said unto the king, as a hearse. Well, he's not going to speak to say. I mean, you can't press a type all the way through. All right? Joseph is the greatest type of Christ, but Jesus Christ, you know, didn't get involved with a woman, you know, and all that other mess. Jesus Christ didn't end up in prison. You can't press types all the way. Jesus did not have a coat of many different colors, and Jesus Christ was not, you know, the 
the son of Jacob. You cannot press types all the way. Because Joseph was a sinner and Joseph lied. He took the cup and put it in his brothers. And Jesus ain't going to, you know, defraud you. You can't press types all the way. So Haman said to the king after hers, There is a certain people scattered aboard and dispersed among the people in the provinces of thy kingdom. So, it's like Paul speaking to the high priest for the Christians in the book of Acts. You got all these people. And their laws are diverse from all people. That's the truth. So far, he's telling the truth. Genesis chapter 3, he speaks the truth all the way, except for one part. That's what's wrong with Satan. That's what you've got to watch out with Satan. He'll tell you the truth uh, nine times out of ten. It's that tenth time. Satan will tell the truth, but that tenth time. Their laws are diverse from all the people. Yes, they are. The book of Moses. There are certain things in the book of Moses that did not match the birds and the bees. They did not match the Babylonians. One thing was their law was God is to be the God. Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy, with thy might. Well, the Medes and Persians had other gods. They had, you know, the Medes and Persians can have pork chops. The Jews couldn't. Even Daniel had to talk to the to king of Nebuchadnezzar about a certain diet. So he's right. But here's the half lie. Neither keep they the king's laws. Well, back in chapter 3, verse 2, only one man didn't keep the law. Everybody else was obeying the laws. Everybody else was, was bowing down to Haman. It was only the men in the gate that were supposed to do it, what it looks like. And only one man didn't do it. Don't go after a whole nation because of one man. But that's been the history of the Jews from Abraham, I said. So that's the half lie. The king's laws, with an S. King's law. The king's law to bow down and worship me. That's the one that I don't like. So he lied there. Therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. And suffer means keep them alive. Allow them to live. So, so Satan is going to get up in the tribulation period. He's going to speak to all those people. He's going to say, listen, these people won't worship me. We're, we got to kill them. It's going to be the death decree. Wanted. Jews. All shapes, sizes, sex, anything. Any age. Preferably dead. By the way, bring their blood so we can drink it. Isn't there a church out there that, that claims to drink Jewish blood at least once a week? They say it's Jesus' blood, magically transformed. Well, if that's Jesus' blood, then you claim to drink Jewish blood. Then you're the you're the of this Antichrist. By your own profession. Because the Antichrist is going to drink. The blood of the saints. Who would be the saints in the tribulation period? And don't say church. Church is gone. Has to be the Jews. Why would they drink the blood of Jews? What did God do to the water system? Turn it to blood. Well, if we're going to drink blood. Why don't we drink the blood of God's people? Show you something, God. You want our war to be blood? We'll drink the blood of your people. I'm just saying that could be a possibility. If it please the king, let it be written that it may be that they may be destroyed. And then I look now look at this. Mark this. I will pay. Now Haman's saying, listen. I'll come up with the money. I I will pay. Now picture the thing, uh, illustration. You invite a couple people to a restaurant, 
You're sitting down at the restaurant and you say, I'm going to pay, okay? Everybody order what you want, I'm going to pay. This is the illustration. So that means the person that says, I'm going to pay, means everybody else's pocket wallets, billfolds, don't need to be checked. Only the one that says, I will pay, will have to open up his wallet. But watch. I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. That's a lot. Jesus was only 30 pieces of silver through Judas. You see how angry Satan is now? He sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. The people who are God's people, 10,000 talents of silver. That's a lot of silver. To the hands of those that have the charge of the business, to bring it into the king's treasury. And the king took his ring from his hand. Well, let's go back to 2.21. We need to go back to 2.21. It says, In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on king Azaharis. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name, and when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. Okay. Go back to chapter 3, verse 10. Where is the, where's the inquisition? Where is the matter? Where is the... Let's find out if Haman's telling the truth. There is none. No one will question Satan, the Antichrist. He's done all the wonderful signs. He's done all kinds of great things. He's listen. He's going to kill Moses and Elijah. He's going to make that that image talk. He's going to get the world food and everything. You just take a mark. He's going to call fire down from heaven, and no one will question him. And give it unto Haman the son of Hamadetha the Agite. Now mark this one. The Jews' enemy. Another word you can put for that, oppressor. Which we'll see in chapter 7, verse 6. He's the Jews' enemy and he's the oppressor. Now, will there be Jews that side with the Antichrist? Oh, yeah. Are there Jews that would probably hang out with Haman? Oh, yeah. There's always a traitor. And the king said to Haman, the silver is given. Wait, 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 what? I thought Haman said he was going to pay for it. The king speaks up and says, listen, the silver is given today. The worldwide government is going to pay for the Jews to be killed. The people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Oh, boy. What good does Satan have? What good does a man like Haman have? He has no good. There is no good. Hey, listen, his conscience is gone, not sheared. You can't put good on the aptitude of Satan at all. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th rebellion, day of the first month. Let's see, we had on the 12th month. The 13th day. And there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writer. Doesn't that sound like when Nebuchadnezzar set up his image in the, in the, you know, the jukebox? Then he called the sheriffs, the lieutenant, and uh, there was just a whole list of people called. And when he played the sub book, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and all that. 
You match that back to Daniel with that image that Nebuchadnezzar sets up. And you got the realm of the Antichrist. So what is the realm, what is we learn from this in Daniel? Two things are going to have to happen. You got to worship that image and you got to kill Jews. Now, I'm not, listen, I don't hate the Jews. I pray for them. Let me make that. I'm just going by what the Bible says, what the Antichrist is going to do, what God's going to allow to do, that they crucified God's son. They crucified their Messiah. They said before the, the Roman government, his blood be upon our hands or hearts or something. I forget what it was. And God says, okay. That's what you want? I'll give it to you. Again, you don't want God to give you what you want if it's wrong. And to, her, to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of the king as a hearse, was it written and sealed with the king's ring. Now there's something else now. This is where King Azahurus steps down. He doesn't become a type of God no more. For now. He seals it in his name and in his ring. In 1 Kings 21.18, Ahab is, my God, has been charged with murder that Jezebel, his wife, did. And Ahab didn't do nothing. He was in his bedroom having a sissy fit. And what did Jezebel do? She took his pen and she took his, his ring and signified for Naboth to be killed. And God charged him. King Azahurus is being charged with killing Jews. That's scripture with scripture. And God told Abram or Abraham... In Genesis 12, them that curse you, I will curse. He didn't do it himself, but he signed his name with his ring like Jezebel did. He is charged like Ahab with killing Jews, where in verse chapter 2, verse 23, he could have made an inquisition in the matter. He could have searched it out. Now, this is where he steps off for being a type of God. Now, let me ask you a question. If that's true and the Bible is true, do you think you'll see this man in heaven? I don't think so. Listen, God told in 2 Samuel 3.30, Joab and his brother were charged with the murder of Asa. And Joab's brother was nowhere to be seen. You say, well, what's the count of that? Joab and his brother were mad at Asa for killing their brother. Joab did the deed, but Amasa th thought, I mean, uh, Joab's brother, I forget his, I don't know what his name is. Joab's brother was thinking about it in his heart. And the Bible says, listen, all you got to do, a man thinks about a woman that lusts after her, he's already committed adultery. You don't have to kill somebody to be charged with murder. This guy allowed his signature, and he allowed this ring. And you find the story again in 1 Kings 21. Jezebel does the same thing. So guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Jezebel and Haman are a type of the Antichrist. Read about and study about Jezebel. Read about and study about Haman, and you'll see the things that... that uh, the Antichrist will have. She has her own prophet sitting at her own table. Oh, wait a minute. She tells Elijah she's going to kill him. And guess who pops up in the tribulation? Now, I believe Jezebel, her name is spoken about in the book of Revelation. See, Scripture, you can't just... Oh, I read my Psalms. You gotta read the whole Bible. 
And you've got to go from Esther all the way back to 1 Kings to get the whole story. Now what happens when you change the Bible? You don't get you don't get the patterns. Scripture with scripture. And the letters, verse 13, were sent by the post. There's your postman. There's your mailman. So if you think the post office was something new and the Pony Express was something new, no, they were in B.C. 515. To all the king's provinces to destroy... Look that word up. To kill. And to cause to perish. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, what happened to that Jewish family? I don't know. You know, there's t people today, uh, presumed dead. I mean, they've just gone missing. You don't ever see them again. They're perished. Unless they find a body in someone's basement or out in the woods somewhere. They per They don't have no idea where they went. So not only killed, but everything about them is gone. They have no idea. Jewish people are going, listen, today all these people disappearing is only just a prerequisite of what's going to happen to Jews. They're going to just start disappearing. Especially when at the end, near the tribulation period, when they all start running down the sail of Petra. They'll be missing by the groves. All Jews. Now, where does it say Gentiles? The only Gentiles will be attacked will be those that help the Jews. Matthew 24, I believe it is, or 25. He ain't going to waste his time with Gentiles. You don't... These, these stupid movies, I'm not going any further. All Jews, both young and old. What did Hitler do? He didn't, he didn't discriminate any Jew. Male, female, skinny, fat, young and old. Little children and women, in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, look at that, 13 and 12, which is the month Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. Government, um, can't think of the word now. Well, the government is going to take in and take all possessions. Of the Jews. That's what they did in Germany. Heck, Germany even went one step further. Imagine what Satan is going to do. Germany would take the teeth of Jews, would take the skin of Jews, and make lampshades out of it. Take the hair of Jews and make all kinds of things. They would, listen, they would take every part of the, of the Jews and make certain things for them. And sell it. People don't know their history. They take the spoil of them for a prey. Prey means to hunt down and get. They're, they're going to take certain possessions of Jews, uh, stuff of the Jews that, is going to, listen, it's going to be their heirloom. It's going to be something very valuable to take certain things of the Jews that make them come to try to get it. What's the closest thing you get? You get these pawn shops today. You go in there, you know, something that you had to, you had to pawn because you need the money. You want to go back and get it back. As a Jew, they're going to go. Where is this hair? Where is it? This thing was how many families ago? And it's going to be taken. So they try to sneer them. To try. Why do you read about so many traps and snares and songs and, and all that? Because there's going to be a lot of traps and snares to get the Jewish people. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people. There's your media, published. Copy. That's what they call newspapers today. It's a copy. Back then it would be, you know, like if you've seen the old West movies like that, you know, they, they put a poster up at the sheriff's office 
and all the different places in the city up on a on a pole, you know, wanted, dead or alive. But listen, if they got electricity and stuff like that, it'll be your media covers on television and on the radio. That they should be ready against that day. Be prepared to get Jews. Get ready for this date. It's almost like a hunting season. Get your license and get ready because on this date, you can go get all you want. Imagine having all the world after you. I mean, we get a few people downtown, you know, they make fun of us and stuff like that. But can you just picture one Jew being downtown and everybody's against him? If you show your face, the whole world knows who you are and they're out to get you. Let's get real now. Let's get really real what, what's going to happen in the tribulation period for that Jew. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, when he came the first time, there was no beauty and desire that we should desire him. Everybody knows what a Jew looks like today. And maybe it'll be marked like Hitler did with it. Well, I think it was a yellow star or something. I forget what it was. The post went out, being hasted by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shinshan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. Isn't there somewhere it says in the Bible, they sit down and they'll make a, a, a league together. They'll be sitting down, they'll be barf on the tables. But the city of Shimshan was perplexed. People are not going to believe it. But you got to be law-abiding citizens and do what the, what the laws... See, one day they're going to do what the laws will say. Or you'll lose your life. And that's that.